Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. Today we're holding our monthly tech meet at my shop and we're going to be working on steering racks. I'm going to show you how to take them apart, put them back together and hopefully make them work. Okay, here we go. I'm going to pop this off. There is uh, the valve housing. Now this is the spool valve. You look at these paper gaskets and, and all kinds of stuff and shims. Oh my god. Don't mix them up. You've got two sets of shims on here. This top set on top of this plate adjusts this so it's centered on this spool. So you, if you get it off center, you're going to get more force in one direction than the other. And then this one right here on the bottom, if you look at it, if you look at this uh, pinion gear, it is tapered. So the closer it gets to the rack, the tighter it's going to get. So this sets the preload on how tight it is. So you don't want to mix those up. It's always important to pay attention. Uh, this, this right here is your lower seal plate, which I'm going to pull off. Well, that one's broken. That's okay. That really should never see any fluid. That's more just to keep out dust. So this seal down here faces up. So when you think about it, when this is all together, let me get this other seal out and I'll show you. I oh, brought those tools over here. This is kind of a compartmentalized uh, unit in many ways. Uh, another tool. I always knew that. You have to excuse me, but our shop is in disarray right now. There we go. Uh, because we're kind of moving things around and <coughs> my tools are now across the, the, the shop. So, here's, here's the business here. For the high pressure fluid, all the directional and all that, on, on this part of the rack is held between these two spots. So when it leaks, if this, any one of these seals leak, it's either going to leak out the top, which is pretty visible, or it's going to leak internally past this seal down into this section. And that's what will fill up these. That's one way it'll fill up. Okay? And there is a lip seal, as you can see. There's an O-ring that seals up against this. This thing right here seals up against this when it's installed. And then there's another lip seal here. I don't know if I can get it off. Anyways, this is a larger version of this that faces up. And you saw, you saw me pull this little spring out. This is part of a lip seal. Most rotating shaft seals or lip seals, whatever you want to call it, uh, have a spring-loaded lip. So this one is actually behind. If you look in here, this will have one too. See that? That's what holds the seal tight. And since there's a lot of pressure here, the, the type of seals for this are designed so that when they're under pressure, they get tighter against the shaft until they wear out. There's that. Uh, now, you'll see one end right here. There's a housing. Are the hard parts like the spool valve available? Eh, I don't know. Only used ones. I don't think any of these parts are available new anymore. Maybe the whole steering rack, that later one. And there was a time when uh, Rolls wanted you to, Rolls and Bentley wanted you to uh, just buy a, the later style with the adapter blocks instead of, and then send these back. You're buying a brand new part and they wanted a core, which I thought was, there's something wrong with that. Um, but they were trying to get everything off the market so they could control it, of course. Um, and at the time, this was 10, 12 years ago, that, that was standard. And to, to buy a new rack instead of rebuilding one on a car, was it was like three thousand bucks, whereas this is much more cost effective. It's like a third of that to do it. So, anyways, this right here has a seal in it. Also, there's an O-ring and a and a groove inside here. There's 
that. So that seals from the housing to here. Okay, you can leave that nut on. That's uh, that doesn't have to come off. Now inside, if if you watch, the rack goes back and forth. There should be fluid in that. Damn. Stop. That's interesting. Okay. So now we got to take this big nut off, and I have a socket for our socket for that. Big socket. This has been off the car for a while, so it shouldn't be too much in there. Yeah, there is some. And you'll see that this also has an O-ring on it that seals flat against this housing. Oh, and this housing is, we got lucky. This housing comes off too on these early ones and then the middle year ones. But typically, and this also has another O-ring inside it that seals against the outside of this. Typically, these are seized on there. Um, because what happens is you have, first of all, steel and aluminum, and they're out here, and this boot doesn't go all the way over to here to seal it off, so you get moisture in there. And, and to get this off, you have to, uh, that's why I have this, this propane torch out, is you have to heat that up until it starts to move, and then you tap it off. But we got lucky on this one. So that one goes over there, right? This is out. So now we'll take this. This is what your steering linkages bolt to right here. The nice thing about doing these steering racks is they don't have tie rods out the end that you have to send to the alignment shop and re readjust. You don't have to take them off. This just bolts on with two bolts. It's fixed and it connects to the linkages. So you don't have to do an alignment when you do one of these. That's a nice thing. So there's a long Allen bolt that goes in here. So other Rolls-Royce models have to be sent up for alignment or other kind of cars? No, all the steering racks like this, they mount the same way. So for other cars, when you do a steering rack, you have to. And I'm not sure what the Arnage has on it. I haven't looked at all those lately. So we're just dealing with this one right here. Big adapter block. And as you can see, there's our rack inside. And why it doesn't want to slide out yet, I'm not sure. So this goes back and forth. This block bolts to the rack, which is the big steel part in there that we haven't got to yet, that turns the wheels back left and right. This has a big seal on it that needs to be replaced, and most of the Rebuilt steering racks that I've seen, they don't replace this. Uh, only because they use a cheap kit that doesn't come with it. So you can see there's a lot of RTV on there, which it's coming off. There we go. This is a metal, this has got like metal inside of it with the rubber on the outside. What is RTV? Uh, Room temperature vulcanizing. Right. It's a sealer. Silicone. Silicone sealer, essentially. Room temperature vulcanizing. That's, I knew that. I just forgot it for a moment. We need more acronyms, right? <laughs> so these zip ties I use to hold the boots on, which are more than adequate. There's no pressure on here. They you typically will come with a metal clamp. Get those off. So now we got to get this rack out of here. Let's see. There it is. Here's we can 
take these off, which you'll see is there's a center piece that these attach to, and that block attaches that to the rack so it goes back and forth. Those things we'll throw away. This thing is stuck. There it is. Bear guts. Be careful when you're working on these. If you do, not to rub your fingers across this edge. It's very sharp. I have drawn blood more than once.